Hello everyone. The snap guides in Camtasia are great for lining things up with each other, center of screen, so forth and so on. But what they don't do is they don't allow you to place anything with precision consistently. So what I've done is I've created a series of pixel rulers and guides. Okay, what's nice about these guides is that once you've placed them where you want them, they also act as a snap grid allowing you to consistently place things exactly where you want. I'm going to make these available as a free download to anybody that's interested. Okay, and also for general layout, you know, placing hot spots and, you know, just even spacing of things without going to the trouble of using the pixel rulers, I've also created some grids. Okay, what's nice about these grids is they have the same characteristics with all the snap grid capabilities built into them. Okay, these have been created from callouts. Okay, so what's nice about that is that you can scale them to any size you wish. You can place them wherever you wish. Okay, you can also control their opacity. That makes it nice because it's very unobstructive to your vision when you're going to place things, and it also makes it easier to see the snap grids in action. Okay, and these are going to come to you in the download as a libzip, so it's going to be very easy to install. Now, what's nice is only 986 kilobytes. This is a standard PNG image. Its file size is actually 50% larger than the libzip download. So, it's going to be no burden on Camtasia to keep this in your library. Okay, you're just going to double click on it like any libzip. Important to your library? Yes, you do. There will be three folders containing various rulers with multiple colored guides. The grids come in two different styles and in multiple colors as well. You can keep any or all of these folders in your library. They uninstall cleanly and they can be reinstalled at any time. I created a libzip download using Camtasia 8.0, so regardless of what version of Camtasia 8 you are actually running, it will install for you. The remainder of this video is approximately 17 minutes long, so you may want to come back later to watch it, but the tips and advice I've outlined should save you more time than that in the long run. I hope you enjoy these grids and guides as much as I do. Okay, working with the pixel rulers and guides is very simple. I'm going to start by undocking the canvas. That's just going to make it easier for me to demonstrate what I'm trying to show you. The first thing that I'm going to recommend is that you lock your main media track because the media is so easy to select and accidentally move. Just come down to your first track and lock that track. That way when you move your rulers and guides around, you're not going to accidentally move the main track. So I've created three sets of rulers. The 2048 rulers are because that's the maximum size that Camtasia's canvas can become. 1920 by 1080 and 1280 by 720 because that's the common widescreen formats used. But you can use any ruler you choose. The key is that you choose a ruler that's large enough. This project is 1280 by 720, so on purpose I'm going to grab a ruler that's too large. I'm just going to grab this pixel ruler. I'm going to add it to my timeline. Now because this is a 1920 ruler, it's going to scale my 1280 project and fit. Well, it's inaccurate as a result, so what you do is you come into Visual Properties, come up to the scale, type in 100%, and now the scale is of the correct size. You would have to reposition it correctly to get it to read correctly, but that's what you need to know because you could be recording at 640 by 200 or whatever. So anytime a ruler is scaled to 100% and placed correctly to the side or top of the screen, it will be 100% accurate and you won't have any trouble. I'm going to get rid of that and I'm going to come up to the proper rulers for my project. Because I have the proper ruler for this particular project, I don't have to rescale anything. As you can see, it fits. So you can reposition these things by using your arrow keys. You know, traditionally, you they would be positioned towards the top of the screen. 
I'm going to leave them closer to the center because it's going to make it easier for me to demonstrate what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to add the other pixel ruler and I'm going to throw it a little bit off to the left. So now I'm going to apply a pixel guide. I'm going with green because green's going to show up good with this background. I'm going to add it to my timeline. Now these work just like anything else. You can use your arrow keys to reposition them. And you can add as many of these things as you wish. I'm going to throw in a red one just for the heck of it. I'm going to throw that off to the side. You know what, let's just delete that to make it easier so it's not confusing. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to throw another guide into the mix. So let's take a close look at our scale. I'm going to zoom in. As you can see, this guide is placed at the 650 pixel mark. The ruler reads from left to right going upwards. It's subdivided at 50 pixel increments with the tallest part of the scale, 10 pixel increments, and 5 pixel increments. Because you can only zoom in to 300%, it didn't make any sense to try to subdivide right to the pixel because Camtasia simply would not allow you to see them well. The properties of the vertical ruler are identical except that it scales from top to bottom. So if you wanted to position this particular guide at 653 pixels, you would use your arrow keys to nudge it. But one thing that you're going to want to know about that is let me select this guide. Okay, because I am zoomed in at 300% mark, if I hit nudge three times, one, two, three, I'm going to unselect it. As you can see, it really only moved one pixel. So I'm going to reselect it. I'm going to move it back those three nudges. Okay, so what you do is nudge only works correctly one pixel at a time when zoomed at 100%. I'm going to come up here. I'm going to zoom at 100%. I'm now going to hit it one, two, three times. I'm going to zoom back in. And as you can see, I'm at 653 pixels. That's the best way to get absolutely precise pixel placement. So I've placed my vertical guide at 600 pixels and I've placed my horizontal guide at 300 pixels. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here to my timeline. Because all of these items take up room in your timeline, I'm going to go ahead and group them to free up timeline space. And you can also, if you're unaware of this, you can shrink down the height of your tracks quite a bit and gain some space that way as well. And I'm also going to go ahead and lock this track so I don't accidentally move around any of my guides or rulers. Okay, and one other important thing is placement of your media against the guides. The guides actually have a left and a right side to them. I changed the color of the guides to black because I discovered it's actually a better color for this particular demonstration. So I'm going to take this call out. I'm going to place it against the guide. As you can see, it's illuminated to the right of the guide. That's actually the 600 pixel mark. If I place it to this side, it illuminates to the left. That's actually the 599 pixel mark. I'm going to show you something in Photoshop real quick. I'm going to export this frame to allow me to do that. And I'm also going to take this to the right side and export an image. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop. I'm going to zoom in. Okay, as you can see, the call out is to the right of the guide. The guide is placed directly at the 600 pixel mark. And in Photoshop, when you go to the top, you will see that the right of the guide is precisely the 600 pixel point and the left is 599. We're going to peek at our other export. This is the one with the call out to the left of the guide. Zoom in and you can see it's precisely placed at 599 pixels. That's all you really need to know to make sure you place your media with precision. Okay, one other important thing to know. This particular project is 1920 by 1080 in size. I've applied rulers and guides but you can't actually see the guides at this time. 
The reason for that is that the canvas is sized too small for Camtasia to display a one pixel image. There's a couple of ways to get around that. My choice would be to undock the canvas and have it sized large enough to allow you to see the pixels. Now in most cases when you're going to be placing things, you're going to be zoomed into the screen anyway. Okay, and you would just hold down your space bar traditionally and move your canvas around to taste. I'm just going to restore this, set it back to shrink to fit, and you may even be able to position your timeline to a size that's suitable to you to work with it this way. It's kind of, it's up to you, but all that's really important is that you can see your guides. Okay, so now we're going to look at the grids. The grids come in two sizes, large and small. This is what I call large because the pattern is such a large pattern for the squares. Now I'm going to switch to a small grid. Okay, as you can see, the pattern is much smaller. They also come in two different styles. I have solid grids and what I called high contrast grids. I didn't know what else to call them. This is a high contrast grid. It's actually three beveled corners, so it's got that look. Now let me switch to the solid one. Okay, so you see these have a, a, a solid look, and they just got a little bit, actually a little better contrast than the ones I called high contrast, but they're solid in nature, so that's why I call them that. See, if you look at the white, the white shows through very well, now I'm going to switch to the, to the other style and see how much softer that looks. And honestly, it's a little softer on the eyes. That's what I think these are good for. But you need the solid ones for higher contrast situations. They, these come in six different colors. And this applies to all styles of grids. Take a quick peek in the library. Here is one of the folders, high contrast large grids. And here you see six selections. All the folders look the same inside. That's all you really need to know about that. Okay, now I want to cover the best way to apply a grid to your project. In most cases, you're probably going to have a lot of media on the canvas ready to be positioned. So what you're going to want to do is come into your library right click on your grid, add it to the timeline. Now this is going to place it on top of everything and that's not a good way to use them. So what you're going to want to do is simply right click, select send it to the back. This is going to place the grid underneath everything. So come down here into your timeline. Here is your main media track. It is now on track 2. You're going to select it come back into your canvas area, right click, send it to the back. Okay, now your grid is placed properly underneath all your media and on top of your main track. Once you've done that, it's best to lock your main media track. That way you don't accidentally move it around. And once you've scaled and positioned your grid to taste, you're also going to want to lock it. Okay, I want to show you that you can change the duration of this just like any JPEG. And scaling and positioning is pretty simple. Come into your visual properties. If you use the sliding scale slider, that will keep your grid centered. Okay, the grids were created at 1920 by 1080, and this project is 1280 by 720. So if you zoom out, you can see the grid is actually placed pretty far outside of the project, scaled to 100%. So in any situation, you scale the grid to taste. Okay, in this particular situation, I'm just going to leave it at 100%. Selecting 100% is as simple as using the reset. The green center lines, they are dead center of your project, no matter what project you use it in. Okay, you can also control the opacity of the grids. That way when you go to place your media, it's much easier to see the background as well. I have discovered that black seems to be one of the easiest grids to see in most situations. 
So I've turned all the media back on. Now let's say this is exactly how you want your grid to be. Just come down and lock your grid too so that it doesn't move. Now you're ready to take advantage of the snap lines and start positioning things. So I'm going to grab my little Camtasia emblem here. I'm going to zoom in and show you that just like this just like the guides with the rulers with the callouts the callouts are actually three-sided okay there's a bottom a center and a top right center left so you want to be aware of that and what's kind of nice about that is that if you position your media to the center and then use that to place other media when you lose the grid you have a nice spacing between your objects the grids are 100 percent accurate when it comes to dimension and size in most cases, dropping the opacity of the grid is a good thing. Because once you've done that, the snap lines are much easier to see, and you can see the media below. When you're done using the grid, simply come down to your timeline, right click and delete it, right click and remove all empty tracks. Now your timeline has been restored to exactly as it was before you applied the grid. Here's something else that I want to point out. Because these were created with callouts, if you accidentally click on the open group, you're going to get this. And if you're not familiar with callouts, all you do is find an empty area of the timeline to close it back up. But there's also another nice feature about the fact that these are made from callouts. I'm just going to delete this media to make it easier to show you this. I'm going to scale this to fit the screen. I'm going to ungroup this. Okay. The very top group are the center lines. Okay, These are green. If you don't want them to be green, if you wanted them to be black, you could come up here into your callouts area and change them to black. Okay. Then in your next group, these are all your horizontal lines. Okay. So if you wanted just to have this pattern, you could have that. If you wanted to lose this horizontal line, you would ungroup this, remove the proper line. Okay, same goes for if you wanted a grid of horizontal lines. Then you would simply just regroup all of these. And there you go. So they're a pretty versatile thing scale them, distort them as you wish. And once you've created something like this, you could add it to your library and that way you would have it available anytime you wish. That concludes grids. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment area.